let me say good evening uh, and welcome to the second public information center for the Soper Hills Secondary Plan. Uh, my name is Mark Joll. I'm the lead municipal planner for this project. Uh, before beginning, I would like to read the municipality's land acknowledgement. The municipality of the municipality of Clarington is situated within the traditional and treaty territory of the Mississauga and the Chippewa of the Anishinaabek, known today as the Williams Treaty's First Nations. Our work on these lands acknowledges their resilience and their longstanding contributions to the area now known as the municipality of Clarington. I have already introduced myself, uh, Mark Joe. Um, but also from Clarington, uh, we have Lisa Bacchus with us. Uh, she is the uh, Acting Manager of Community Planning and Economic Development. And we also have Karen Richardson with us, who is the Manager of Development Engineering in our Public Works Department. Um, Suzanne uh, will be uh, delivering the, the bulk of tonight's presentation. Um, and so I will have her introduce herself and her team. Hello everyone, my name is Suzanne McDonald with SGL Planning and Design. I'm joined this evening by Paul Lowe's, also of SGL uh, Planning and Design, who's our project director, um, as well as Amar Ladd and Cassandra Leal uh, from T. Wyland. Thanks, Mark. Okay, uh, thank you, Sam. Uh, so the main purpose of tonight's Information Center uh, is to present three land use alternatives and to answer questions and receive comments, uh, any comments that the public may have. We will also present some evaluation criteria, that is what things we want to look at when we're evaluating these three land use alternatives. <clears throat> I can appreciate it if land use alternatives, evaluation criteria are a bit confusing, uh, but let me just give a brief outline of tonight's presentation. Uh, and then I'll step back a bit and, and give the, the context and explain generally what those things are. So tonight's presentation, as you can see here, will provide the context and the study area for the secondary plan. We'll also provide the vision statement for the project and show where we're at in the overall study process. Then we'll get to these different land use alternatives and evaluation criteria. Uh, there are about 40 slides in tonight's presentation, which we'll go through. Uh, and that leaves lots of time uh, to answer any questions there may be in the chat. So throughout, tonight, throughout tonight's presentation, we ask that you enter your questions and comments using the chat feature. Uh, there'll be a member of our team monitoring that chat and grouping similar questions, and we will do our best to answer them. So please, as you're listening tonight, uh, throughout the presentation, post any comments or questions you have in that chat. Um, if you're having trouble locating that, you may just need to move your cursor around a little bit, and then the chat is at the bottom there, um, at the bottom of the screen. Um, <clears throat> and then in a few minutes here, Suzanne's going to tell us about some pretty fun interactive polls and word cloud things that we'll be doing. Um, so we look forward to that in a second, but uh, I just wanted to give some context first before uh, handing things over to Suzanne. So this here shows, um, this map here is from our official plan, uh, and it shows us where the Soper Hills secondary plan is in the municipality. Uh, so the area is, you know, on the south, it's Highway 2. To the north, it's uh, the rail tracks that are north of Concession Street. On the west is Lambs, and on the right is Providence Road, or as it's known, South Highway 2, uh, Bennett Road. Um, this map also shows us a number of other secondary plan areas. So what is a secondary plan? Um, so this map is in our official plan and it lays out the broad policies, uh, you know, related to land use planning. So for example, you know, where are we going to have housing? What kinds of housing? Uh, what areas are protected for agriculture? Where and how are we going to protect, you know, the natural heritage system? You know, things like that. Um, but on the next slide, we can see a secondary plan is, you know, specific to a local area. And once it's completed, the secondary plan actually goes into the official plan. And the secondary plan or a neighborhood plan is another way to think of it, adds details and objectives to the overarching policies of the official plan. So it gives us more focused uh, development guidelines for, for, a, for a specific area. So tonight, when we're looking at these various land use alternatives, what we're really looking at are where there's going to be different types of land uses, where those different land uses will be located. 
you know, where will there be single detached dwellings? Where, where will we have townhouses? What kind of arrangements will there be for apartments, uh, mixed use buildings? Where should the schools go, the parks, trails, those kinds of things? Um, I should say though, we can't just put anything anywhere we want. Um, those are our guiding policies, again, in the official plan, Clarington's official plan, as well as the region, they have their own official plan that we need to you know, be in conformity with. And of course, there's direction from the province. Um, but you know, we will be creating a, a more detailed land use plan. And a major component of a secondary plan or of developing a secondary plan is incorporating feedback from the residents of Clarington. So please allow me to turn things over to Suzanne. Uh, she's going to explain uh, the different ways that we'll be receiving your input and answering your questions tonight. Thanks. Thanks, Mark. Um, perfect. So as Mark mentioned, we were going to be doing a bit of an interactive um, survey this evening. Um, so just before I get into explaining how you can choose to participate, I did want to start by saying that this is just one of the many ways of participating. Um, so we will be asking questions throughout the evening that you provide, provide responses to. If you don't want to, or if that doesn't work for whatever reason, the similar questions will be posted on, this, um, on the municipality's website under the project. Um, so there will be other opportunities to respond. Respond. Um, but hopefully many of you will choose to participate with us through our live survey tonight if you can and there's two different ways you can do that. Um, so you on your electronic device, whether it's the same computer um, that you're currently watching this on, or you can alternatively use your phone. If you open a second web browser and type in www.menti.com, um, M-E-N-T-I.com, um, you'll be prompted to enter a code. Um, which is 71378694, and that'll take you um, into our survey. And as I go through the slides, different questions will pop up on the survey. So you'll know it worked if you see this slide pop up on your phone or your computer, however you choose to do it. Um, alternatively, if you have a phone, you can turn on your camera and point it at the QR code there on the screen, um, and it should automatically pop up. You can click on it, and it'll take you right into the Menti survey. Um, and whenever we do have a the a question up, the code, the, the website and the code is gonna be at the top of the screen there. So if you kind of get knocked off or um, get out of the website for whatever reason, you can always get back in whenever there's time for a new question. Um, so with that, uh, we'll go to the next slide and we'll have the first question. Um, and first off, we just wanna know a little bit about uh, who's uh, chose to join us this evening. Uh, so we'd like to know about you. Uh, so if you choose to participate in our survey, um, please do so now and you can select as many of the statements that apply to you um, uh, uh, on this, that in the questions. So if the questions pop up, so that's great. We've got one, one resident. And yeah, if, if more than one of the answers apply to you, feel free to click all of them um, and submit your answers. So I'll just give a couple more seconds, um, just to let people get their answers in. Um, and also I just will recap, because I know a couple people just joined. Um, we are doing an optional interactive survey this evening as part of our presentation. So if you'd like to participate, uh, as part of as part of our presentation this evening, you can go to on a electronic device, whether it's a phone or a web browser in your computer to go to www.menti.com and type in the code here. And then as I work through the presentation, you'll either see the slides that I'm presenting or you'll have an opportunity to put some input in um, and tell us um, what you think as we go through. Um, so as you can see here, we've got some, some people um, who are residents, some who are interested from a, on, a, on a professional level and some, some who own some land. Um, so thank you so much for, for those who, um, who answered our first question. As we work through the presentation, I'll be having a couple more questions um, that we can answer. I'll just give it maybe 10 more seconds um, to get let people get their answers in um, and, uh, and then we'll move on. Great. So the uh, uh, one of the things that we did as part of our work is to come up for a vision for the secondary plan area. Uh, and the vision that we came up with and developed as part of this project so far is to develop a community that reflects and enriches the history and character of both the municipality of Clarington 
and the study area, to create a sense of place for residents and visitors, and to design a sustainable built form that protects the natural environment, pr promotes alternative modes of transportation, and supports a healthy lifestyle for current and future generations. Uh, so we would like some feedback on, on the vision. Uh, so I'm going to go to the next slide. And that's one of um, and our next question as part of our interactive component this evening is we're wondering if there are any uh, specific words, uh, a word or a number of words in the vision that you feel are particularly important. Or are there any other keywords or concepts that you think should be included? Um, so on your on your device, if you are participating tonight, you should have a text box that you can add some words in now. Um, you can do multiple responses. So if you want to insert um, or put, provide comment on um, uh, or provide multiple responses, that's that's great. Um, you can can submit more than one word. Um, so I'll, I'll just leave it here for a sec to allow you guys to uh, take read read the vision and, and see if you have any any comments. Okay, so we can go to the next slide. We can start to see um, some words pop up. And what's interesting about, about this format is what we're seeing is, as obviously as people are submitting words, um, we're seeing them pop up. If a word gets bigger com in comparison to other words, it means that uh, more, multiple responses have been provided. So I see sustainable right now is the biggest. That means that uh, more than one respondent uh, responded sustainable. Just give a, a little, a couple more minutes here to let let people continue to provide your responses. Thank you so much uh, for the responses we've gotten so far. All right, so we'll we'll keep going, but I do mention that if, if you do want to provide more um, input either later this evening um, or on on our survey that will be posted on the website as well, um, this is definitely not your last chance to, to provide that input. Um, so we did want to speak briefly to where we were in our study process. So we have completed phase one, uh, which included a background analysis, um, as well as identification of opportunities and constraints um, for the study area. Uh, we also, as Mark mentioned, uh, produced three alternative land use concepts that we'll be discussing uh, this evening. And so that's really the purpose of this presentation is to review those uh, land use alternatives. Um, and then the next steps of that will be to uh, evaluate the alternatives to really understand the best parts of each of the different alternatives and that'll all be summarized in all in our alternative land use report and from that evaluation um, we'll be coming up with an emerging land use plan and I just want to mention that it's not that we're going to simply pick one of the three alternatives that we're going through tonight uh, very much so it's going to probably be a hybrid our emerging plan uh, for the study area will very much be a hybrid of the different and best components of the different land use alternatives um, so with that, I'll, I'll go to the next slide, please, and I'll start. Uh, uh, I'll just I wanted to highlight how how we developed the different alternatives. Um, so this was alluded to previously um, by Mark, but I did want to mention 
that uh, how we what was considered as we came up with these three alternatives. And so as mentioned, the background work that we did in phase one, the public engagement in phase one, as well as the provincial policies uh, that guide development in Ontario, um, as well as the regional policies that guide development in uh, Durham region, and very importantly, the Clarington official plan policies and green initiatives that they have in place. Next slide, please. Um, so there are a couple elements. You'll see some similarities across the three alternatives. Um, and so I just wanted to go over these common elements and explain a little bit of background of why they why it is laid out the way it is. So the first thing is the minimum gross density of 50 people and jobs per hectare, and that's a provincial requirement. So all three of the alternatives do hit that density target. In addition, we have Highway 2, which is designated as a regional corridor within both the Durham Region Official Plan and Clarington's Official Plan, uh, so that those policies guide what um, land uses can be proposed along Highway 2. Uh, similarly, we, similarly, we have the local corridor um, on Lambs Road, as well as on Concession Street, um, and the southern portion of what we're calling Providence Road. Um, it's currently not open, but will be. Um, and so again, Clarington official plan policies do provide direction of what can occur along those roads. Um, also, as well, we do have similar um, swim pond uh, conceptual locations shown in each of the three alternatives. So that's they're very similar across the three alternatives, as well as we have shown the environmental protection areas, uh, which is where you have your natural features and natural heritage. Um, so for example, where you have wooded areas and a stream corridor, um, and that is mapping provided from environmental uh, uh, consultants who are currently undertaking the subwatershed study for the area. And that, of course, because it's reflective of existing natural features, is consistent across the three alternatives. Slide, please. Um, so I did want to talk briefly about the overall overarching theme for each of the three alternatives quickly, um, and then I'll be talking in detail about some of the different land use categories um, that are, are being proposed. Uh, now I know that the legend in the corner there is quite hard to read, um, but don't worry because I will be walking through some of the different land uses in detail, so you don't really need to worry about that. What I did want to focus on in this slide is just the overall differences between the three alternatives. So alternative one was really a north-south focus, centrally located, centrally locating a lot of the uses along that north-south collector, collector road. Um, moving on to alternative two, um, or the focus was much more centrally located um, along concessions. So you can see there's the red box there, which is the neighborhood center, um, and then the community park in that corner. So it was really a bit more of a focus at um, concession as well as that north south collector, comparing that to alternative three where we see that focus of uses in the southwestern corner, um, where that's sort of the area where we see a little bit more uses. So that's a little bit how the different alternatives differ. Um, and if we go to the next slide, I'll be talking about some of the land use categories in detail. Um, so as I mentioned, there's direction both at the um, Durham region level, as well as in the Clarington official plan uh, for development along Highway 2 and in it being a regional corridor. Um, so we've shown two potential land use categories here. Um, so the first one would be uh, the high density mixed use regional corridor, and that's shown in the red and white hatching. Uh, and that's shown to be, that would include buildings of apartments or mixed use buildings of seven to 12 stories. Uh, compared to the solid red, which would be your medium density reg regional corridor um, land use category, and that would be for apartments and mixed use buildings, five to six stories in height. So I'll just go to the next slide and show you what that might look like. Uh, just we've got some illustrations here. Um, so in terms of the high density mixed use regional corridor. So again, this was the red and white hatching. We, I've got a nine story mixed use building shown here, just as an example of what that might look like versus the medium density regional corridor on the right, uh, which was a five story mixed use building. Um, so going to the next slide, 
um, I, we want to ask you what your thoughts, and I apologize, I, I see now that's actually maybe a little bit small, um, but the key thing that we're wondering is if, is there a location where you'd want to see that higher density or that higher built form, um, which is the hatching or the red and white stripes uh, along the regional corridor, um, so that seven to 12 height. Um, so in alternative one, as you can see, that is focused down at the Providence Highway 2 area versus Alternative 2, where it's split between the two corners, southern corners of the secondary plan area, and versus Alternative 3, where we've actually got it centrally located uh, along the, the center collector road. Um, so if you have your phones or your Mentimeter um, system ready to go, you, we can vote if there's one of these three alternatives that you prefer, um, whether it's Alternative 1 at the south um, east corner, alternative two at the split between the two corners, and then alternative three, which is centrally located along the regional corridor. Although we do have a small piece or small amount all as well at the lamp, excuse me, at the lamps roadside. Uh, so I'll just give a couple more seconds to see if anyone else wants to vote. I see a couple people have, have put their, um, their preferences in. Perfect. Yes. So we've got some results. Oh, so we've got we've got three votes for the two corners, uh, and then one vote for the the other two alternatives. Perfect. And I, again, we'll we'll move on. Um, but again, as I mentioned, there's there will be other opportunities for you to provide input uh, on these if on our live survey. If you just wanted a little bit more time to to look at them and, and think about it before providing responses, and that that's perfectly fine. Um, so we've got the local corridors next, which are shown uh, in the two different colors of orange. Um, so we've got the medium density local corridor mid rise which would be planned for mixed uses and apartments of five to six stories in height. And that again is the orange and white uh, stripes, um, as well as the medium density local corridor low rise, which would be two to four stories and permit townhouses as well as the mixed use and apartments. And again, this, um, the, the, these requirements would are, are required in order to align with the intent for local corridors as set out uh, within the Clarington official plan, similar to the way that the regional corridors were requirements to, to, to uh, match what's set out in the um, Clarington official plan as well for, for regional corridors. Um, so I'll just skip to the next slide and I'll just uh, have some pictures again of that built form. Uh, so for the first one, which is our medium density local quarter mid-rise, we've shown a five-story uh, five mixed-use building versus the medium density local corridor for the low-rise. We've shown some townhouses there because that is an option um, for that, for that uh, land use category that we're looking at. Um, so we'll go to the next slide. And again, I have some questions. Um, so wondering uh, if there's one of the different local corridor options that you prefer. Uh, so I'll just kind of go through the differences um, uh, as you as you kind of consider them. So alternative one, the the, the greater density or the, the taller buildings of five to six story and option one, we've put them at, at concession as well as in the two corners closer to the regional corridor versus alternative two, we've got it centrally located as well as uh, located at one of the east-west collectors in the southern portion versus option three, where it's a little bit more focused on Providence and Lambs. So we've got a couple sections of that density along Lambs as well as one at concession uh, along uh, Providence as well. Um, so curious if you have a preference for one of the alternatives over the other, you can go ahead and vote now if you're interested in voting. Um, and let us know what your thoughts are in terms of that. Great, so we can go ahead and look at the results slide as people continue uh, to put in. Okay, so in this, this time we've got a, a bit of a preference for alternative three. Uh, we'll give it a couple more seconds here in case anyone else wants to vote before we move on. Great, thanks. So we'll uh, we'll move on to the next slide. So now we wanted to talk about the low density, uh, which does make up a large portion of the study plan area. 
Uh, and the solid yellow would permit semi-detached and uh, uh, semi-detached and uh, detached dwellings. Uh, and then the um, yellow and white would uh, uh, stripes or the hatching would be the low density townhouse. Um, and that would permit townhouses. Um, so uh, the plan or uh, the policies would allow for about 10 to 12% of the low density area to be built for townhouses. Um, so we actually have a bit of a different question on this one. Um, while we do show different alternatives, as you can see across the three alternatives, we do show different options for where those townhouses could be located. Uh, what the feedback that we're actually looking for um, as part of the survey tonight, and actually we can go to the next slide, um, is whether the townhouses should be grouped uh, in, uh, and one together or more spread out. So um, before we get to the question, sorry, I forgot, we, we, I will go through the just the pictures here. So we've got an example of the semi-detached at the at the top there and the single detached on the right at the top and then an example of townhouses uh, at the bottom. Um, so going to the next slide, we are curious um, if you wanted to see the townhouses grouped together in um, sort of larger areas like we'd shown on the alternative, versus more spread out and more homogeneously di distributed throughout the low density area. So when I say grouped, it might be four or five streets or blocks all with townhouses together versus if it's more spread out, you know, you might have um, a single street with towns or have them at the end of a block that's otherwise um, semi-detached and single detached dwellings. Uh, so it's just how much, how much it gets grouped or more spread out through the area. That's kind of the input that we're looking for. Um, so you can uh, maybe show us the results slide, please, Adrian. Perfect, thanks. So we've got, we've got a couple votes for more spread out and uh, a couple votes or equal amount of votes for a bit of both, very interesting. Um, so we'll move on to the next slide. Thanks, thanks for your input. Great, so next we have the neighborhood center, um, which would be a mixed use area that would contain uh, retail as well as could permit residential uh, development as well. In terms of retail, you might see um, it's a, a grocery store, a convenience store, or other small stores, uh, or you might see some service uses. You might see, for example, hairdresser uh, or restaurants. And the idea would be to provide some amenities, some uses that people could, could access to meet their daily needs. Uh, and it would include uh, a maximum of 5,000 square meters be 5,000 square meters of, of retail space. Um, so I'll go to the next slide. Just here we have some photos uh, of some examples of the uh, what what this mixed you uh, sorry what this neighborhood center could look like. And as we work through the secondary plan um, policies and and develop policies for the Soper Hills area. Um, that you know, we would further develop what that neighborhood center would look like. Uh, next slide, please. So we are curious if there's a preferred location for the neighborhood center. So just going through the three alternatives. In the first one, the neighborhood center is located at Concession and Lambs. Uh, in the second one, it is located um, centrally located at the north south collector at concession and then on the third one it's more so in that southern east corner that sort of node of uses that I spoke about earlier uh, also along lambs so there's three different options there oh I've got five votes already um, so we can go to the results slide okay we've got some some preference for the alternative two location and centrally located uh, within the secondary plan area um, I'll just give it a couple more seconds there and uh, uh, see if anyone else would like to vote.
All right, so a preference for alternative one and alternative two for sure. Perfect. Thank you for thank you for the input. Uh, so looking at the schools next. Um, so far, we've identified that likely three schools will be needed. So each alternative does currently show uh, three school locations, and these would be elementary schools uh, in purple. Uh, each school is approximately 2.43 hectares in size. Um, and as we work through the process, we'll be uh, through this secondary plan process, we'll be continuing uh, to confirm uh, school needs with the with the different school boards to make sure that this um, continues to, to to meet the needs as as the project evolves. Um, uh, go to the next slide, please. And we've also uh, identified where parks should be located. Uh, so you can see that there are three categories of parks. Uh, we've in each alternative, we have one community park, uh, which is the largest park that um, we have, which is six hectares in size. Uh, so in the first alternative, it's located at Lambs um, north of Concession, um, whereas in the second alternative, it's located um, at Lambs uh, along Concession. And then that largest park in the third alternative is a bit further um, south. Um, and then we do have neighborhood parks and parkettes also shown in each of the alternatives. Um, we do vary across the alternatives, the amount of neighborhood park versus parkette. So in alternatives one and two, there are two neighborhood parks and two parkettes. Whereas in alternative three, there are actually uh, only, there is actually only one neighborhood park, but we have uh, six parkettes. Uh, so we've switched up the distribution of parkland between the neighborhood parks um, and parkettes just to make them a little bit different. Um, but overall, all three do have the same total area of parks, which is 12 hectares of parks. Um, so we go to the next slide, please. Um, so curious if there is a park um, alternative that uh, is preferred. I did kind of go through them um, just uh, in detail, but uh, key difference between them is, of course, where that biggest park is located, um, with it being north of concession in alternative one and two, uh, and south of concession in alternative three. And then, of course, a key difference of alternative three versus the other two alternatives um, is whether the uh, uh, the alternative is whether it's more neighborhood parks and parkettes versus, um, sorry, more parkettes versus in only one neighborhood park is the key difference in, in alternative three. Oh, we've got uh, all the way across. Okay, alternative two is get, getting ahead a little bit. So there's some preference. Um, a little, some preference for all three. I'll just leave it here for a couple seconds if anyone else wishes to, uh, to vote. Okay, I think that's it for the voting for this one. So we'll move to the next slide. So I wanted to briefly talk about the road network that we've provided. Uh, so in purple, we have the arterial roads, uh, which are mostly existing except for that part of Providence that will be filled in. And then we have different um, options for the collector roads, which is shown, which are shown in pink. Uh, so one of the key things um, is that uh, in alternative one, that road crosses the natural heritage or the stream corridor right at the southern portion and connects all the way to Highway 2, whereas on Alternative 2, that road does not cross there, but it curves uh, to the west and connects up with uh, Lambs Road. Um, and then, but there is a cross connection. So if you look about uh, halfway down the southern portion, you can see that there's a full east-west collector that goes right across. Uh, that's an alternative two that is not present in alternative three. Um, and then alternative three is, is quite similar to the alternative one. Uh, so we are con considering the different layouts for the roads and the crossings. And one of the things that we'll be looking at in our evaluation um, is which is best from an environmental standpoint where that crossing um, uh, has the least amount of impact. And I also note that we've got some yellow shown, uh, which shows uh, our 
the, the local roads. Now I note that that doesn't show all the local roads. We did just put in some main connection points to illustrate um, how the main connections can occur within the secondary plan area, as well as um, connecting to um, roads that are proposed outside of the secondary plan area. Slide, please. We've also got some trails shown. Uh, so we have an off-road trail that's in the environmental protection area or the natural heritage area. Um, and that connects to a broader trail network within Clarington. And we also have multi-use paths, which would be along roads. Um, so you can see a picture, we've got a picture in the bottom corner there that shows uh, what that might look like with, for example, the bike area next to the um, sidewalk there. Slide, please. Um, so uh, we did want to speak briefly, I've, uh, now that I've gone through the alternatives, um, we did want to speak briefly to the evaluation um, step that's going to be coming up next in our project um, and the principles that we'll be using to compare the three alternatives. Um, so I've, we've got a couple of principles and I'll um, be speaking briefly to those criteria and measures that we will be looking to actually evaluate the different alternatives. Now I note that this is very high level. Our report, um, which will be posted on the, the study website soon, uh, goes into a lot more detail, the principles and the measures and the criteria that will be used to evaluate. Um, so if you do have um, any comments on those, that's something that you can submit to our set study team um, and all that. I'll, we'll be providing that, that information on how to do that at the end of the presentations. Um, but to get started, I just wanted to talk about our first principle related to built environment, uh, which is to provide for efficient use of land with the creation of a compact, complete, connected and walkable community. Uh, so what we'll be looking at there in terms of our criteria and measures is um, where the density is located within the alternative. Uh, and if it's uh, if that density is along the corridors and along roads that um, will have, have transit to support transit use, um, as well as if the alternative um, is successful in creating and supporting a walkable community and fostering a sense of place. Uh, the next principle, slide please, is uh, transportation and mobility. So the principle is to reduce dependence on personal vehicles and prioritize active transportation modes of travel by creating a network that encourages walking and cycling and improves overall health for residents and the community. Um, so what we'll be looking at there is really about the functionality of the uh, of the road network, um, and if it provides the capacity and connectivity needed to support all modes of travel, and as well as minimizing the impact on the environmental protection areas, so on those natural features such as your stream corridor. Slide, please. Our next principle related to the natural environment and environmental protection area, with the principle being to protect, enhance, and value significant natural features within the EPAs. Uh, and what we'll be looking at there is really how the um, trails impact or relate to the environmental protection area or those natural features, um, and also what uses are next to them in order to make sure that the uses that are next to the environmental protection area um, support their protection. Uh, and then also for parks and open space, the principle is to design parks and open spaces that are highly visible, accessible and usable. So the measures and criteria that we'll be looking at will really look at um, the distribution of the parks across the secondary plan area. And if one, if one provides a better distribution than another, and if they, the parks are centrally located within their neighborhoods. Next slide, please. Principle for related to sustainable uh, servicing and stormwater management infrastructure is to provide for adequate servicing, both water and wastewater, to the new developments. Uh, so again, here we'll be looking at uh, making sure that uh, the servicing in the based on the, how the alternatives compare in terms of being able to provide efficient uh, servicing um, and also minimizing again the impact on the environmental protection area. So minimizing um, unnecessary crossings of the watercourse feature. And then lastly, the cultural heritage, heritage and archaeology 
archaeology principle, which is to respect cultural heritage through conservation and appropriate incorporation into the community. And we'll be looking at um, if one alternative compared to the other is better at conserving any uh, cultural heritage features that exist, um, as well as how the plan relates to the jury lands, uh, which is a cultural heritage um, uh, uh, area to the uh, west of the secondary plan directly across from LAMS. Uh, so we'll be looking at the relationship between that as well. Next slide. Uh, so in terms of our next steps, as I mentioned, uh, we'll be considering the input we received tonight. We'll be considering any input we receive um, uh, through the, the online survey that will be posted or otherwise submitted uh, to the municipality as part of the project. Um, and then we'll be doing also a technical evaluation of the different alternatives and from all that, uh, coming up with a preferred alternatives that uh, takes, takes the best of the three alternatives that have been prepared so far. Um, next slide, I, I believe we were into our the question and answer uh, period of our of our evening. So thank you for listening to me uh, talk uh, at length there. And thanks for those who are able to uh, participate uh, through our survey. Um, we uh, every, Everybody um, who wishes to have any further questions answered can submit those uh, through the chat function. Um, and uh, Paul will uh, let us know what those questions are and tell us uh, and we'll uh, answer them to the best of our abilities. Thanks, Suzanne. Uh, that was a quite a thorough presentation, and we've got a couple questions. Uh, and I'll just start off uh, with the with the first. And that was why are three alternatives that do, uh, why are there alternatives that do not locate community parks adjacent to all three schools? Suzanne, do you want to take a first stab at that? Yeah, absolutely. And in fact, if I can, um, Adrian, perhaps you can go back to the slide that shows the schools and the parks for me. Um, perfect, thank you. So where we could place a neighborhood park next to a school, um, we, we did try to do so. So um, you can see uh, the because of the ratios in two of the alternatives, we have two schools, uh, sorry, two, two neighborhood parks and three schools. Um, so for example, in alternative one, two of the schools do have neighborhood parks next to them, um, but there wasn't another neighborhood park to put next to the school, but that school is quite closely located to the community park. Um, alternative two, we did make a little bit different because we did want to have one alternative that had a neighborhood park um, in that southeast corner um, that uh, is a little bit more isolated because of the uh, location of the stream corridor. Um, so uh, we wanted to evaluate what it looked like to have a park in that location, which meant that there couldn't be a neighborhood park next to the school in that location. Um, and then in the third alternative, we also wanted to look at what happens if we have fewer neighborhood parks, but have a lot more parkettes. Um, so there we did put um, one school next to a neighborhood park. Uh, we have a school close to the community park um, in the center there. And then we have a school um, next to the parkette. Uh, so to summarize my answer, we did consider it. We just didn't treat it the same in all alternatives. We wanted to be able to uh, evaluate the different options for how we put parks and schools next to each other. I'm not sure if anyone else on the team wants to add uh, to that. Yeah. I'll, uh, I'll just add uh, uh, a little more on that. Um, you know, when we uh, evaluate these options, we will be looking at whether it makes sense to put parks beside all the school sites. We also have to confirm whether there actually will be three school sites uh, or, or less. Uh, I really doubt there'll be more, uh, but we'll have to confirm that. And then we'll be evaluating with through option one, or alternative one, whether it makes sense to uh, put a school site versus uh, adjacent to all, uh, sorry, park adjacent to all school sites. But what we did want to do is, is really look at some of the different alternatives, such as creating more urban um, community with, with a, a more distribution of, of parkettes in one of the options. So that's why we didn't do it in uh, uh, adjacent to all. Uh, anybody else want to, any other comments? Yeah, I was just going to just, so it's clear to everybody that um, the school sites, I just want anybody to think that just because you're not showing a park beside a school doesn't mean there isn't a park within the school block itself, right? Um, it's not like it's just going to be a building with a parking lot around it. There will be a park there anyway. It's more of an extension of the park. Um, and I think, you know, particularly when they're uh, elementary schools, um, the park 
you know, the, the municipal park is sort of, is usually out of bounds for, for, for the kids anyway during recess or something like that. So I just want to make sure, you know, it's not, nobody's thinking we're just going to put a, a building uh, in the middle of a, of a parking lot and call, you know, not have any, any parkland beside the school. So. Yeah, yeah that's, that's, that's a good comment, Mark. And these, these are fairly uh, large uh, um, parks, about six acres. So that, sorry, parks, school sites, about six acres. So there will be green space, and not a municipal park, but green space on all the sites. Uh, there's also a question on uh, why not have an alternative that does not uh, cross the creek. And I'm, I'm uh, imagining that is a collector road that does not cross the creek. Uh, and maybe I can take a first stab at that and maybe ask Amar uh, from uh, T.Y. Lynn to also jump on. Um, but one of, one of the, the things we're looking at is, of course, connectivity, uh, which is very important, uh, and network connectivity. So. Uh, we did not look at an option that didn't have uh, like a network connectivity, at least to the south or east. Frankly, I think the third option, uh, if I was going to do it again, would have one where we cross both creeks in one of the options. Uh, so we have a uh, even more fulsome connectivity in each direction. But uh, Amar, do you want to um, have any other comments on the collector road network? Yeah, Paul. So I would just kind of build on what you're saying in, in the sense that with the three alternatives, we wanted to explore different aspects with um, each one. And the, the final result could pull from a little bit of alternative one, a little bit of alternative three, a bit of alternative two, maybe on the north side. Like, um, But we want your feedback on what do you think about um, each, of the, each, each of the portions of, of these plans, right? So um, specifically on Highway 2, we're thinking, okay, well, if we don't have any kind of roadway, uh, collector roadway connecting down to Highway 2. There's quite a big distance between uh, the two collectors on the southwest and southeast side, um, or between the arterials, my apologies. Um, so can we look at other alternatives to provide access into the into the study area? So it's just really looking at different options, trying to see where what are the pros and cons of each segment. And we welcome all of your feedback on, uh, with regards to that. Thank you. Uh, the next is a related, but on the active transportation side, uh, where are the active transportation connections to the existing network? Suzanne, do you wanna hit on that one? Yeah, so the, the plan network um, that's in the Clarington official plan uh, is along the, um, uh, the natural heritage or the environmental protection area. Um, so that would be, you know, the broader connection um, and then uh, of course, multi-use trails um, that are throughout the, the secondary plan area uh, would provide connect connectivity within and connecting to outside of the uh, study area as well. So it's built in in sort of both of those ways, one with the more off-road trail, the broader connection, as well as the multi-use pass paths. Um, I don't know, Mark, if you wanted to add anything to that. Uh, yeah, well, I was just going to maybe ask you to just sort of highlight yeah. where we're showing uh, multi-use paths because as I'm seeing it you know there's one down that central uh, collector north-south collector you've got them heading east and west um, along concession street uh, heading east and west along those other collectors that's right is that, is that what I'm just it's a little bit smaller I just want to make sure in case somebody isn't quite seeing all those those arrows because uh, you know I thought we did a pretty good job in terms of you know there's the trail that runs along the side of the the creek there but you know all these collectors having multi-use paths i think is you know all, all of all of lands road all of providence road yeah, and, I'll, and i'll just point out the existing conditions for the study area itself are, are quite limited right there's not a whole uh, series of uh multi-use paths and, and cycle cycling infrastructure for example in the study area but we are connecting uh to the municipal network along the arterials uh, specifically Highway 2, um, lambs and concessions. So whatever we're proposing within the study area will connect out and uh, and link up with the surrounding networks. And, and just to clarify a, a comment Suzanne made when she said the, the environmental area, um, I believe we're referring to, because it's not showing up as a green, is the uh, Soper Creek uh, corridor where we see the red dashed line of the off-road trail. That's, uh, that's the trail link that's, that's shown in the official plan and connecting through there. And just one other comment when we're talking about uh, connecting to the existing uh, trail system, 
We also see that the uh, multi-use path connects uh, with an arrow uh, to the jury lands right in the middle, which is the, will be the municipal park. We connect through to there. And then from that municipal park, there is a trail system uh, through the valley to the west. So we'll be connecting mm -hmm. through there to that existing trail system. Um, there is just a comment from the same individual. Concession isn't and Highway 2 are not uh, active transportation infrastructure. Yeah, so I, I'll just answer that one. Uh, so not all of the boundary road networks currently have active transportation infrastructure, but they are proposed within municipal and regional plans. Uh, and that infrastructure will be built out uh, in terms of timeline, probably prior to or probably in line with uh, the secondary plan area. So there will be infrastructure connecting to this area. It does not all exist right now. That's true. Suzanne or Paul, just um, as I was watching the screen as we were answering, it was difficult to see if you were actually showing where the active transportation network is. So could you just go over that once more on one of the alternatives so we can see the line work or where your cursor is moving, please? Uh, absolutely. Adrian, can you, if you don't mind, go back to the slides that just show all, all, the alternative one, but with all the colors turned on? I think it'll be a little bit easier to see um, if we show it on that slide. And then I can reference it to the other colors a little bit easier. Yeah, perfect. Um, so it's a little, well, that's probably not actually not that as clear as I thought it would be, but I um, I was, Suzanne, I think the transportation schedule is the best if you go back. Sorry, Adrian. Oh, sorry. I think the transportation schedule is pretty good. Right. Yeah, well, well, back one, back one, Adrian. Back one there, I think. No, that's not as good. No, Adrian added this the next one. Yeah, I think I think that is the best. I think that one is where we start is the best one. Yeah. Maybe going forward in the next presentation, we'll change the color of the trail so it's a little easier to see for everyone. But. Yeah, apologies, yeah. it's a bit harder to see the brown within that dark gray, um, but there is, if you can imagine um, where that stream quarter, there you go, Adrian, if you kind of show where that that green, or they're pointing to the trail, uh, that's that's where we've shown the location of that uh, of that trail along that natural heritage or the environmental protection area. And Adrian, can you just show also show the multi-use paths and just a few of them so you can see the brown? Yeah, there we go. There's also the north south one along the along the main center of collector road, Adrian. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. And then as I mentioned before, along both from top to bottom, Lambs and Providence. Yeah, that's great. Now there was a there's a question on well, when will the master plan be released? And I'm not sure um, what master plan is being referred to. Is this is this active transportation master plan? And maybe Mark. Is there something? Oh, probably. Yeah. When will the AT master plan be released? That would be the active transportation plan. I'll have to defer to Lisa on that one if she can help me out with an answer on that. Uh, I do not have a concrete answer. My understanding <laughs> okay. is uh, staff are in the process of preparing the uh, the terms of reference for it, and we are continuing to work on that. So the active transportation plan was a requirement out of the Clarington Transportation Master Plan. Um, hate to deflect one more time, but perhaps Karen may have a little bit more information for us. And I think too, there was, wasn't there the, the regional active transportation master plan was just completed. And then once that was done, then we can feed ours into it. So, yeah. Yes, that's correct, Mark. That's what I was going to add is that the, we're waiting for the region one. So staff are working on the active transportation for Clarington. Uh, there was a comment from Mike, Domovich, re-park locations, but we're not, we're not sure what you mean by re-park locations, uh, Mike. So you might want to add in another uh, comment and um, a little clearer that we can uh, respond to if you wouldn't mind. Um, there's also a question on until when are we accepting comments and survey input in these alternatives 
having heard the feedback tonight. So Suzanne. Yeah, we'll, we're sorry, I was gonna say, we'll put the survey up for a couple of weeks. Um, of course, any time throughout the secondary plan process, uh, people are welcome to provide comments via email call. Come to the calendar. We're open now. Um, so yeah, two weeks for the for the survey, uh, and uh, any at any point, a project web page will at the end of the presentation tonight. We'll show it a few times actually. The project web page and the project's email address, uh, and you can always uh, contact the team. Uh, so this is from, uh, sounds like one of the uh, landowners uh, who strongly objects to a park being put at the southeast corner of secondary plan. Uh, we do not have much developable land and the park takes away too much of the land. Please move that park elsewhere. As Suzanne said, we are looking at all alternatives and we're evaluating those alternatives uh, where there is definitely a need for a park of some size in the uh, uh, southeast corner. Uh, there is a requirement under the uh, uh, Planning Act for parkland dedication, uh, and uh, we will be looking for some sort of a park in that location, whether it's a park at or a larger neighborhood park, and we'll be uh, we'll be looking at that and evaluating that. And your you know comment is well taken. Uh, we wouldn't want to put a park where uh, in the southeast corner it takes up all the land and there's nobody then to actually use the park. So um, uh, we will be you know, taking that into account for sure. Uh, and there's further comment from that owner, uh, clarifying there was a referring to alternative two, which I figured and just uh, comment that a park at would be okay. So thank you for those comments. Um, we're going to give a few minutes if anybody else wants to provide a comment or a question in the chat. I'm happy to respond to that. And we're recording this, so we have all the comments and the questions uh, that we'll uh, we'll be lo looking back on from the from the uh, from the chat. Okay, well, it sounds like I got a good handful of questions there. So, um, thank you very much for those questions, everyone. Uh, those were good. I think those are things uh, that we'll certainly uh, you know really consider as we move forward. Um, we just got one more about the park. So um, it's just a suggestion as to where to put the park. So I think that was addressed there. Okay, yeah. Um, so as I said, um, so there'll be an online survey that will be posted to uh, the Soper Hills website, clarington.net slash Soper Hills. Um, be somewhat based off the questions that we asked tonight. Um, during the interactive poll. So uh, there'll be additional questions as well. Um, yeah, typically we put up those polls for the surveys for a couple of weeks after the, the, uh, the PIC. Sometimes it takes a day or two to get the, you know, the websites to work and everything. So we, we leave them up for a couple of weeks anyway. Um, at any time though, uh, you can email soperhillsclarington.net uh, and uh, you know, contact the team. Um, we'd love, you know, love to have your your comments, your feedback. If there's, uh, you know, anything else uh, you'd like to add, any 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 other additional comments, uh, it's very important to us that we that we hear from the residents and from Clarington and the broader public. So, um, with that, I'm just seeing something. There was just one. There's one yeah. additional comment. Maybe we can take as a question yeah. on Providence Road. And it says, "Is there any timing associated with the extension of Providence Road between Highway Two and Concession Street?" Karen, <laughs> that's a tough. Sorry, one to uh, yeah. it's most likely development driven. So we would look at it as development comes online and then the extension would be required as part of the traffic just to provide more connection. So it's hard mm -hmm. to answer that question. It really depends on when development comes. Yeah. Yeah, those are tricky. Those are always good, great questions and, you know, love to answer them, but, you know, can be really tricky. There's so many variables out there and, uh, you know, all kinds of other things. Always asking, is it tied to the 401 interchange study? Someone's doing the homework here. So 
so with I'm not sure if it is I haven't had um, a chance to review the interchange study I know it's still in the draft stage so once we get a bit further on there could be but I haven't been able to review that okay fair enough yeah okay all right. Well, um, yeah, tricky to answer those questions about timelines because there are many other things uh, that, that influence those timelines. And so it's hard for us to give a precise, precise answer. But um, so I think uh, we'll wrap it up here. So again, uh, we'll get the recording of tonight's meeting up on the website. We'll have the slide deck up there. There's the accompanying report that gives more details about all those uh, evaluation criteria and all those things. Um, again, please reach out to us uh, if you have any questions or comments. Uh, and other than that, I think, you know, we'll finish up here. It's only 7.30. It's still pretty warm out there. Uh, so uh, please enjoy the rest of your evening. And thank you very much for attending this evening.